today we're at Eric Penser with Christine Lind, who's the CEO of Medivir. Christine, what is it that you do? Yes, well, I am the incoming CEO of Medivir. I have the good fortune of already being employed by the company as the head of our strategic business development organization. Uh, and that deals with our in-licensing and our out-licensing uh, other business development opportunities. Okay, and can you tell us a bit about Medivir? Yes, Medivir today is an R&D-focused oncology company. Uh, we spend all of our time in R&D, not in commercializing any longer. Uh, and our entire indication focus is in the area of oncology. Uh, we very briefly have two pieces to the business, what we call our proprietary pipeline, which are the projects that we develop ourselves in-house, entirely focused on oncology. And we have what we call a partnership pipeline, which are the projects that we develop in collaboration with partners to generate more value for the projects. But you actually recently made the change towards oncology. Yes, Why did correct. you do that? Yes. Uh, Medivir has traditionally been known for its antiviral programs, especially in the area of hepatitis C. Uh, we've come to the conclusion that from a market opportunity standpoint, uh, this was taken about three years ago already, uh, the hepatitis C field would not be sufficient to really sustain value in Medivir. And therefore, we looked for opportunities of additional places that we could expand the company from an indication standpoint. Oncology presented a very good opportunity, both as a good fit for our technology, our scientific platforms, in terms of areas that we could take them next and build new projects, um, as well as also being a very valuable field to have new projects in. You've also made some restructure, restructuring within the company. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us why this was necessary? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it, it is unfortunate sometimes that you have to take restructuring decisions. Uh, part of this was uh, for us to be able to enable more nimble value generation. And so as much as we've restructured internally in terms of the number of employees that we have and have taken cost cuts there, uh, we do anticipate that we will spend a lot more time with outsourcing partners and in collaborations to be able to enable the company to uh, use those uh, resources more actively, more nimbly. So to shrink when we need to shrink and to expand when we need to expand. And what can you tell us about your technology platform? Mm. We have two very good scientific platforms. Uh, they're called the nucleotides is one platform and the other is the protease inhibitor platform. Um, important there for people to understand is that it's from those that we're able to generate all of our projects and they're based on the combination of chemistry experience that we have at the company biology experience that we have at the company and then just many years, over 20 years actually, of operations in terms of knowledge and experience to be able to apply those to uh, a variety of places. In this case, in the case going forward, it will be solely in oncology, um, but those platforms are where we are able to continuously generate new projects uh, such that we can develop them further or so that we can outlicense them. And can you tell us a bit about how you screen for new business opportunities? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, there, it comes both internally and externally, so we look for new opportunities wherever they may present themselves. Uh, internally, it's about finding places where our scientific platforms can add the most value, where we believe that the indications are well applied to our scientific platforms, where we can generate new value-creating projects. Externally, we also use our expertise within those scientific platforms uh, to be able to locate, to search for, to attend uh, partnering conferences, for example, um, or just from our relationships with other companies, other biotechnology companies or other pharma companies, to find projects that we believe that Medivir can add more value to. I want to talk a bit about the oncology program that you bought mm. from Tetralogic. What was included in this purchase? Mm. It's a very good question and, and ties very well as well to the last question that you just asked about how we look for new opportunities. Um, so the two projects that we bought from Tetralogic are called Remitinistat and Burinapant. Difficult names, both of them, perhaps more important to talk about um, where they're being developed and how they tie to Medivir scientific platforms. Um, important with Remitinistat is that this is our project for an orphan cancer disease. It has a very, very large market opportunity. Orphan drugs, despite having small patient populations, can have very large revenue opportunities. Um, so this one is for a skin cancer, a type of cancer that uh, originates in the blood and then becomes manifested in the skin. It's not a great disease, uh, but it's a very good project in that um, it is a better drug 
uh, for a disease where it can be used very extensively, very safely in a patient population and still have good efficacy against their cancer. Um, important perhaps to remember here, uh, orphan drug, lots of benefits that come with having an orphan drug designation, um, as well as a very good tie to our technology platforms in two ways. One way in that uh, the target for the particular drug is very similar to the protease inhibitors, so we're able to understand that from a scientific platform. Uh, and then it is also an organ targeting drug, so this particular drug targets only the skin, which is what partially what makes it safer. Um, and we understand as well from our technology platforms the case of organ targeting, how to target something to a very specific place so that it is safer for the patient to take. That's project number one. Project number two we call a project within a project, uh, so it has uh, many opportunities for programs. There are many places where this particular drug can be developed. Uh, the first is where it is being developed is for solid tumors. It's being developed in collaboration with Merck, uh, known as MSD in Europe. Um, they are providing their drug Keytruda, which is one of the great immuno-oncology uh, programs, uh, drugs on the market today, and we are putting Barinapant together with Keytruda in solid tumors. Uh, we hope to be able to make it more efficacious. Um, those drugs, immuno-oncology drugs, have uh, achieved over $5 billion in revenues uh, just in this last year alone. So it's a very lucrative market opportunity to be able to add benefit to those drug combinations. Uh, Burinapan is also being studied in what we call an investigator-sponsored study, which means that Medivir is not paying for it. Uh, the physician uh, is able to find funding to be able to drive the study. This is in ovarian cancer, uh, which is also a very underserved cancer, uh, very large market opportunity. Again, uh, $800 million market opportunity today, and that's because there are no available drugs for patients. Um, so with only chemotherapy as an option, an $800 million market is quite a large market. Uh, we certainly hope to be able to take Barinapant um, and provide a drug that works uh, to, to the ovarian cancer patient population and therefore increase the size of that market. Um, there are many other opportunities as well for Burinapant in other indications, so we believe that this will be a program within a program where it can have many opportunities to achieve um, large revenue opportunities across lots of different markets. Uh, this one also ties to Medivir's scientific platform, um, so both compounds we have the ability uh, to truly understand them, which is one of the reasons why we were able to buy them as well and to be able to develop them and add value to them. And apart from this, you have several other projects ongoing. Uh, can you give us the most important points here? Sure, we'd be happy to. Uh, there are two other programs um, that we have currently in what we call our development pipeline. Um, one is called BIV-818. This is the, another cancer opportunity. This comes directly from our nucleotide scientific platform. Um, we developed that drug to be for liver cancer, so it is a liver targeting cancer. Same as I said with Ramatinostat, where we have organ targeting in the skin. This one is organ targeting in the liver. Makes it safer, uh, so we can deliver it safely to the liver where it will actually work. Um, liver cancer is also a um, very underserved market where there is only one approved drug for liver cancer uh, and it doesn't work that well. Um, so we're quite excited about that one. That one is currently in preclinical development and we expect that that one will be able to enter phase one um, in 2018. Um, the last compound is actually part of our non-oncology projects. Uh, it's the only non-oncology project still remaining in our pipeline. It's called MIV-711 and is for osteoarthritis. Uh, again, very, very large lucrative uh, market opportunity for that. Uh, we believe MIV-711 has the possibility to be a blockbuster drug. Uh, that one is currently in phase 2A studies where we hope to be able to show uh, efficacy as well as safety of that drug uh, and the data for that particular drug will be coming in the third quarter of this year. So very soon we will be able to see whether we've been successful in developing that compound. Okay, and last but not least, why do you think that our viewers should invest in Medivir? Yeah, uh, I think we have an incredible pipeline. We've talked a little bit about it today. Um, I would uh, challenge most investors to be able to find another company that has a pipeline as strong as Medivir's is with many, many opportunities to generate value. Um, I've, I've said this in the past as well, but um, any, I think if any one of our programs were to succeed, it would be quite 
a good investment, a good return on the company. And investors who invest in Menevere have many such opportunities to be able to see um, their investment uh, return to them, uh, hopefully manyfold. With that, I want to thank you for coming and wish you good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.